I am Bill Cortright with Living Right with Bill Cortright. And this is the Stress Mastery Podcast, where we take you from the science to the spirituality of stress mastery. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Stress Mastery Podcast. I am Bill Cortright, and I am here with the super millennial, David Barreto. How you doing today, Dave? I'm doing good. So this week... Our topic is healing. In today's Meeting of the Minds, we are discussing the guilt program. We've done several shows on guilt, Dave. A lot. A lot. (laughs) But today, let's tie guilt and healing together. If we look at guilt, guilt is defined as the fact or having committed a specified or implied offense or crime. Well, in stress mastery, there is a specific reason why I focus on guilt. And number one reason is every human being besides sociopaths have the guilt program. Guilt program is set at age seven when a child enters the second stage of development. This is the imperial mind. Now the second stage is what sets the child's identity to fulfill the roles in the tribe. So as our ancestors climbed down from the trees and entered the plains, they did not have the skills of the predators that surrounded them. Animals develop skills and intuition to survive. And these skills are usually built around speed. Well, the human being didn't have physical speed, but they did have a mind that could reason. And this allowed the human to plan and anticipate how to escape or kill the animals that were faster and stronger. Now, the human develops its skills through reason. Let's try this, or this might be a better way. And through experience, this works, this doesn't work. And with consistency and repetition, we develop a skill. Now the skills we create are held in the cage mind in the subconscious mind. And it's the subconscious that drives 95% of our behavior. Now, as the human being develops skills, the brain develops to allow skills, which include cultural uh, beliefs, to be automatically downloaded to the child. And this passes the skill down through generations, and that's what takes place in stage one of development. And this enables the human being to expand and grow. So it took millions of years for the mind, the brain, and the body to develop into modern man prototype that we have today. This prototype we see today as a human being was set 200,000 years ago. At this time, 200,000 years ago, man lived in perfect operation of the three minds. The cage mind held the conscious mind. The conscious mind of the human analyzed information and made decisions based on reason. The cage mind also held the subconscious mind and the skills that allowed behavior to take place without conscious thought and allowed these skills to be passed on through belief systems. Now, when the human was in focus and reason of the conscious mind, they connect connect to the creation mind. Here, they were connected to their purpose in the superconscious mind. And this has allowed the human to grow, expand skills, and expand their world. Do you understand? You yeah. get all that? Mm-hmm. Now, because our ancestors only stressed out when there was true danger, not because they worry about what Sally thinks about this new dress, or if Hank believes I'm a successful enough, they became connected to the mastermind. And this is what we call head, heart, and hand connection. The human being's survival was dependent on this connection. 
They didn't have the luxury to procrastinate or get depressed or be angry and hate and protest. They had to be connected with conscious mind control. You understand how, how we were wired, right? Yeah, effective action versus just random like upset like we're doing now. <laughs> they were in focus. <laughs> yeah. Right? Now this isn't this is really important. The early human didn't get bombarded with information or distractions like we do today. The early model of the human being didn't even have language. And they didn't have uh, 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 to deal with, think about it, living in large groups. They, la they lived in small clans of no more than 150 people. And they didn't have different belief systems. So they didn't have a lot of information to process. So it was natural for them to live more in head, heart, and hand connected to flow, mm -hmm. right? So because of this, skills passed on for this 200,000 year, years were very easily, I guess, I guess I'm looking for condensed. Mm -hmm. There was a lot, remember? Skill, remember what skills are, people? Skills are programs. And these programs were set for the tribe's survival in unity. And the guilt program is designed for, for that unity, especially in stage two of development. It is this stage the child gets the experiences to play out their roles. And that guilt program's function is to self-regulate behavior to maintain congruency within the relationships of the tribe. So that's a number one reason that I focus on guilt in stress mastery. The second reason that we focus on guilt and stress mastery is guilt is the anchor of the ego. See, our ancestors did not live in ego. For 200,000 years, they functioned as units. 10,000 years ago, as tribes disbanded, the human beings became farmers. They stopped roving the plains and cultures began to merge. Now the human being's system, mind, body, that functioned so long in unity was in disruption. Cultures merged, races merged, belief systems merged, creating information overload, and for the first time, the human being became stressed out and egos were now dominant. So this is when we come up with the strong survive. One race is more worthy than another. We have caste systems. We have gender control. Religions took root. Fear and seeking security began to rule the day. The conscious mind was basically overwhelmed with too much information and the ego took control. Can you see how that happened? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. For me, I think I, this is like a, the next shift that I'm starting to see now with the technology, right? It's because it's even further separation because people have multiple like personalities now from social medias and there's different, more separation online, which follows in person, which is now leading to families being separated, which was like tribes never separated like that. Never. Now we're separating within our own family, our immediate like tribe. Because a too. tribe couldn't separate, yeah. they wouldn't survive. Now... Now, when that happened, right, guilt wasn't used any longer to create or maintain unity of relationships. It was now used in that state of disruption to control relationships. Mm -hmm. So guilt is now used to induce someone to do what you want. Also, the ego, and this is important, uses guilt to get you to do what it wants. 95% of our behavior comes from the subconscious mind. While the ego has its base in the wants, those four wants, and it's protected by the fear energy of the comfort zone, guilt is the ego's anchor. As humans from all over came together this is when religions were built 
in guilt to control. Societies were ruled in guilt to control. And the human being became stressed out and suffered in guilt. So last week, we did a show on grief. It was the first time I focused on the grief energy, right? First time, never done it before. Why? Because grief is natural for the human being. And processing grief is one of the most fearful things the human being can do. And the first reaction to loss is to run and hide or fight and aggress. Our ancestors built elaborate rituals around grief so they could process. Death was honorable. Today, death is feared. So we fail in the grieving process. So I decided years ago, when I started coaching and teaching, I would not focus on grief. I would focus on guilt. Although guilt doesn't feel good, we are more inclined to deal with guilt than before to deal with grief. Would you agree? Yeah. Right? So that allows me to work on Focusing on guilt because if you release guilt, guess what? You're not going to grieve. Exactly. <laughs> Can't grieve or be stuck in grief without guilt. It's impossible. So that's number two reason. Number three reason I focus on guilt is if you release the guilt program, you automatically release grief. You can't get stuff in, stuck in grief without guilt, but you also when you release the guilt program, create a huge shift in consciousness. The stages of development are part of our hardwiring for survival. The first three stages are set for every single human being on the planet. By age 16 years, a healthy human being is in stage three. And I say a healthy human being because some of people get stuck in stage two. They never learn conflict resolution. Yeah, no. Right? Especially, there's more now than ever. They get stuck there because they can't deal. Well, and that's always on the parents, by the way. The parents, and I'm not saying that to be mean. They didn't teach them. They have to be taught in that second stage. But most human beings and in stage three, in that socialized mind. Now, this stage of development sets your perception and identity. It sets your habits. And in stage three, the comfort zone is set to maintain habits, beliefs, and roles. Now, the challenge is this, our mind, body, and body, mind are set for us to live in small bands of people, no more than 150. And we are set to have a unified belief system where everybody believes the same thing. And we are set to exist in connection with our purpose and connection with others and we are designed to be an individual that serves the whole no caste systems and obviously this design of the human being that survived and thrived for 200,000 years no longer works synergetically in the world of today yet the human being is hardwired for behavior so, we naturally seek to change. We each seek higher states. What are the states we are seeking? And the reason we seek these states is because we're stuck, stressed out. So, what are the states that we seek? The higher states of love, joy, and peace. And even if you may be unconscious of this fact, it is a truth. Our ancestors connected to these energies because you connect to these energies when you connect head, heart, and hand. Cage mind, creation mind to mastermind. To seek this, you know, that's why we seek change. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Do you have any comment on that? It just, I, I think with the, the election stuff that was going on, you see it, it becomes apparent how people It was are. an election? <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I so. think that, 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 goes to how the, the divide was and all that stuff and how guilt really starts to, to pull around the, the tribe for that change. Like yes, you're saying. absolutely. So think about this. This is important. To seek any type of change, 
-hmm. any type of change in your life is to go against the human design. Mm -hmm. And part of this design is the guilt program. To guilt programs distinction is to keep you in stage three socialized mind. This is why so many people fail to create long-term change in their habits. So few find true love, joy, or peace, and so few actually find true health. If we can just take a moment, David, because this is important, and pause to really grasp what I'm talking about here. When I say the human being is hardwired for behavior, I think we should take a look at how the human being came to be. You all right with that? Yeah. So what does science tell us? Well, let's take a look. And then you guys will understand why it's so important to understand what we're teaching you. What does science tell us? Number one, some four billion years ago, life began on the planet as some single cells. These cells are part of all life on the planet today, including human beings. Number two, 1.2 billion years ago, this first multicellular creatures appeared on Earth. Number three, 600 million years ago, there merged the first organisms with a central nervous system. In the human construct that we've been teaching you, this is the human survival system of the red zone alarm system and green zone recuperation system. This would be the starting point that would lead to the development of the brain. Can we begin to see how powerful the red and green zones are, right? Yeah. And that was 600 million years ago. And this is just the beginning. Number four, 500 million years ago, the first simple animals would appear. And this would come as a result of the Cambrian explosion. This was a crucial event in the evolution of animals. And this is when the spine eva evolved. It's the first time the spine comes out. And it was the Cambrian explosion that was responsible for upright walking. Now understand this, David. The Cambrian period lasted 13 to 25 million years. The Cambrian explosion, or no, also known as the Cambrian radiation, changed everything. Number five, 360 million years ago, we see the first traces on land of the amphibian creatures. Fish grew four legs left the ocean to crawl on land. Number six, 120 million years ago, first mammals appear. Number seven, 60 million years ago, we saw the first primates in which us humans would directly descend from. Number eight, six million years ago, our earliest human ancestors arrived. It was like, I guess, when some ape creature began walking upright on two legs, mm -hmm. right? Number nine, two million years ago, the Homo erectus appeared and represented the first recognizable member as a modern human. The Homo erectus means upright man. Finally, 200,000 years ago, the modern man, the modern human, the and the exactly how we're put together today evolved the Homo sapien, or also known as wise man. This connected ancestors of ours had the same brain size as we do today. So here we are living in modern society in 2020, yet. We are built to live and survive in the environment of 200,000 years ago when we existed in clans of 150 or less people. Can you see everything that went behind how we are today? You can't discount 
millions and millions and millions of years of our species evolving for survival. Yeah, Do you understand? No, sure. it, it, it's crazy. When you list it out, it's like, that's why it's hard to change a habit. That's why you procrastinate. That's why you self-sabotage. Yeah, we talk about all the time how nothing happens overnight. And even a hundred years, thousand years, a million years is nothing. It's <laughs> nothing. You saw for 15 years, for the ver- 15 million, million years yeah. for the vertebrae, right? So the human being may evolve to live in today's world. Yet, if we think about it, and we pause and really think about it, today's world is changing at lightning speed. The iPod was developed just over 10 years ago, and now we have the iPhone 12. Think about that. That's only 12 years. 12 years. We were saying, oh my gosh, we got a thousand songs in our pocket. (laughs) It's actually funny to think about right now. Science now, here's the thing. Some scientists state that evolution is so slow that the human being over the last 10,000 years has stopped evolving. The basic rationale behind this conclusion is that the human evolution stopped. That once the human lineage achieved a sufficiency and a sufficiently large brain and developed a sophisticated culture, this was the gathered hunter culture, the human being became hardwired for behavior. They stopped evolving. Why? Well... They had an alarm system to escape danger. They had the recuperation system to self-heal and allow expansion of new skills. They had the subconscious mind to hold skills, habits, so they could connect to behavior without thought. They had the conscious mind to focus, to analyze information. They had a brain that allows programs to be installed in the subconscious mind without effort to pass belief systems from generation to generation. They have a comfort zone to protect and execute unified belief systems. And they had the guilt program to ensure relationships with others and the relationships with self would remain congruently connected to the tribe. Guilt caused us to self-regulate our behavior. So some scientists say that the human being has stopped evolving. Well, I disagree with that because I just don't believe the human being would stop evolving when I when I just listed all that happened. But I can tell you one thing for sure. The human being hasn't evolved in 10,000 years. It's not happening that quick. We just looked at it. An important thing, what I wanted to, to get my point across was it takes hundreds of millions of years sometimes to evolve. 15 million years to change something, right? So what is it going to take for us as human beings to evolve that living in this environment becomes natural? And here's our challenge. The environment we live in today, 2020, look, by 2030, will be completely different. We can't evolve to keep up with the expansion of the mind. Do you understand? Yeah, and and the big thing for me, because I always thought about this when I when I talk to people about this, is that us as our, our brain is doing things, we're making things easier. Evolution is to make the surroundings around us easier. So we evolve because we can't change our environment, but we're changing our environment. So our bodies are like, well, this is kind of easy, you know. Think about like a thousand years ago, what we yeah. had to do to get food, or even yes. two, three, four hundred years ago to get it's food. Unbelievable. It's becoming easy around us, so we become complacent as a Well, the big event would be the agriculture age when we we no longer had to rove, right, to to hunt and Mm -hmm. gather. And we could congregate. We're all together. That's the biggest event. That was only 10,000 years ago. And that's when everything changed. And it always progresses to get easier for us because it hasn't gone anywhere backwards. No. In in fact. It's the best it's ever been no matter how you want to look at it as far as convenience And that's why people, so much disease is Mm -hmm. around. So much You understand this. Very important. All suffering takes place in guilt, the guilt energy. And this guilt program activates when you attempt to grow outside your culture. When you, it activates when you change your identity. Let's say you lose weight or make more money or change your status. 
The guilt program activates when you self-love. I know it sounds crazy, but when you start to self-love and you start to get that program of you're being selfish, you will actually guilt yourself. And that guilt program activates when you become more successful than others in your tribe. And it activates, very importantly, the guilt program activates when you fail to do what you said you will do. And this would be goals that never were followed through, promises not executed to others and self, procrastination. When you fail, guilt pulls you back deeply into that stage three cage. And when it comes to healing, be it healing ourselves or healing our relationships or healing the planet, the guilt program in today's human being causes us to sabotage our growth, our healing, to avoid what we really want to do. It causes us to attack others and defend our actions, even when these actions were non-actions in procrastination. See, the ego uses guilt to tell you that you are a failure. The guilt makes sure you quit and sets a future where you don't try new things and this creates the fear of failure. To really deal with our body, to heal our relationships, to heal our past, to heal our state of being, you must become the healer. And this means you have to take conscious mind control and not allow the scared ego to take care of you. Make yourself the most important person on the planet. And this is actually the only answer to all forms of healing. If you are not the most important, if you don't take time for yourself each and every single day, well, the human being is hardwired for behavior. And I just went through billions of years. The human being, you aren't going to over, you aren't going to use your willpower to beat that hard wiring. That hard wiring, when I say we are hardwired for behavior, that behavior is determined by what is activated in the mind. Which of those nervous systems, remember how early the nervous system came in? Why? Because that is the human survival system. Whatever's activated, behavior follows. If you're in stress, you're in fear. If you're in love, you're in expansion, you're in growth. But it's one or the other. Mm -hmm. Your thoughts? That, that, that when you look at the amount of time that it that it's taken us to get here, shocking, and for us to think that just a generation is is changed because we always mm -hmm. say that like the next generation is yeah. completely different. It's by like it's never it's, it's, different. If yeah, <laughs> if you could put it by yeah. percentage, you would even want to see it because yeah. it's so little. Because nothing's really changing besides the environment. The person living in the environment is the same, yes. you know? And I think that's the, the part that we fail to see because like you said, the phones have changed, the games have changed, the computers have changed, this and that, but the person using it is the same. And if not, it's actually making it even less for the person because it's easier and easier. I think that's the big reason why like we do these, like we, we want to fight on social media and we want to do this is because everything around us has become so simple and so easy and we have that fight or flight. If that's not being you there because we don't have that. that. Yeah. Exactly. So if we can manage that, then I think it's a lot of the stuff that are out there, you won't have it's it. It's not supposed to be turned on and staying on, mm -hmm. right? So if you think about it, for every failure that you had in business, career, or work, every failure you had in making money, every failure you had in trying to lose weight or get healthy and that, and every failed relationships you've had, there's always one thing in common in all of that you feel guilty afterwards and it's you yeah. <laughs> it's not the environment people failure doesn't happen from the outside it can only happen on the inside the challenge we have as human beings is we are hardwired for behavior so that's what the seven steps of stress mastery are designed to do they're designed to work 
with the human beings hardwiring. So we take control of our lives. If you don't do that and don't practice these, well then, who controls your life? Well, we just saw on that social um, dilemma. Mm -hmm. Is that what it is, right? If you haven't seen that on Netflix, you want to know who's taking control of your life, just take a peek over there. And I don't care who you are. That's how they control you, you know? Mm -hmm. So if you really want control of your life, but you know what? More than anything, the human being is seeking states. And the states you're seeking is love, joy, and peace. And this is not emotion. It's not stories. You're seeking those. Our ancestors had that. Mm -hmm. They had that because they connected to the mastermind so they could feel those states. You can never feel those states. Really feel them for any period of time if you're stressed out. You might have a moment, but that moment will be very fleeting. To live in those states, you must understand how we work and how that guilt program is the anchor. Because when you release that program, remember nobody was born with guilt. Not a single person. So if you take that program out, you cannot feel guilt. The big thing that happens with that is the ego loses its anchor. Then you have conscious mind control. You cannot become stressed out if you control the conscious mind. Do you understand? Yeah, and the, the, the thing for me is like how you said that our ancestors had, you know, those states. That's why they celebrated it. Yeah. That's, that's they, exactly why you they celebrated at, the life versus the, the you know, grieving mm-hmm. of the, the death of it. It's because we feel like we don't have that. We're striving for it, but they lived it. And that's why they celebrated. They lived a life full of that state. And it's, it's nice to look back on versus now. Why do you think we're so intrigued with the Indians and Peru? And we're so intrigued. If you look at that, when, when, when the white man came over to the United <laughs> States, right? And they thought the, the American Indians were savages. When mm-hmm. they lived in peace, yes. they lived in harmony. Mm-hmm. They lived, and the only time they fought is when they were attacked. For survival. Yes. They were, you know, think about that. Why do you think, like, we're so Machu Picchu. We want to see the Indians and how they live. Why? Mm -hmm. Because they live the way we're wired to live. But there's no reason why we can't do that now. But the only way that can ever happen is each individual has to shift. Nobody's coming out of the clouds, people, to make sure that we have harmony. We're not having harmony from somebody dropping out of the sky and saving you. The only people that can do that is you. That's it for today's show. Our mission here is to create a shift in a planet. You can join us on this mission by simply, I'm still (laughs) tongue-tied, like, share, subscribe. The links are below the show. As always, until next time, stay inspired. inspired.